This is part two of the four-part series, Building a Restaurant Guide. In part one, we started with Photoshop, and we imported the Photoshop file into three different programs, Flash, Flash Catalyst, and InDesign. This part is going to focus on developing the restaurant guide in Flash. So what I'm going to do first is each of these pop-up windows, uh, and you're just seeing the top one right now on the stage, is content that I'm going to show when I click on one of the buttons. And if I hide all these content layers, you'll see the four buttons. So I'm going to start with content group four. I want to just convert this to one big movie clip because then I'll be able to animate this fading on or coming on screen, whatever kind of transition I want to go with. I'm going to right click on this layer folder and choose lock others. That's going to lock down everything else in this besides uh, this layer group. Now I'm going to select everything by choosing edit select all. It's going to select all of my content on screen and I'm going to convert that to a symbol. It's going to become a movie clip. I'm going to call this content four. And I'm going to hit OK. All right. I'm going to hide that. And now I'm going to go to content three. I'm going to right click on that and choose lock others. Again, that's going to lock everything else but this group. I'm going to select all. And I'm going to convert this to a movie clip. Now I'm going to do this two more times. Now that I have all my content pop-ups converted to movie clips, I can hide them for right now, and I'm going to focus on my panels. I'm going to right-click on the layer group. I'm going to choose Lock Others. I'm going to select All, which selects everything just in that layer group, and I'm going to convert that to a symbol. Only this time, it's going to become a button symbol. I'm going to call this you know, Button 4. Now that's a button. I have to do this again three more times. So I'm going to do that. Now all four panels are converted to buttons. Now I'm going to expand my timeline a little bit because I want to show you something. Now that I've begun converting all these two objects, you'll notice that there's a lot of empty layers. Anywhere you see a blank keyframe, we have ourselves an empty layer. I'm going to go through I'm going to delete all the empty layers and layer folders to clean things up. I've gone ahead and removed all the excess layers in, and at this point I'm going to rename that layer 2 which is ends up being my background layer and I now have a very very clean timeline so all the same content it's just everything's been converted to a symbol and now it's much easier to work with. Now at any point along the way I can test my movie and see how I'm doing. So I'm going to go to the control menu and choose test movie and choose a test. From this point forward I'm just going to hit control enter or command enter if you're on a Mac. I'm going to run my movie. It's now creating that SWF and I can view it. Now I'm seeing the initial content that pops up that's not really what I want but I'm okay with that for right now. Now I can start my interactivity. This is going to be a little rapid fire because I want to keep this tutorial short, so I'm going to go through this stuff pretty quickly. But the general idea is that these four buttons are going to take you to four different places in your timeline and show the four different pieces of content. I could do this more dynamically with code. I could go and download the Greensock library and get some tween light action going on in here. Uh, that's for the programmers out there. I'm kind of trying to keep this similar to how it would be developed in other programs. So we're going to do this traditional way on the timeline. I'm going to start with the fourth piece of content and add an animation to it. I'm going to do this by right clicking on it and saying create motion tween. Now this extends out the timeline. I'll adjust everything later for now, I'm going to go back to frame one. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go to my properties panel, add an alpha of 0%. That's going to fade it out, and now I'm seeing what's below it. If I come to the end of the timeline, click on the object, and add the alpha up to 100%. And I've now created an animation of it fading in. That's going to be pretty slow, so I'm going to make this animation only be about 10 seconds. A nice, quick animation of it fading in. Before I move on, I'm going to right click on my animation that I just made. I'm going to choose copy motion because I want these all to animate the same. So I'm going to go through 
unlock all of my layers, and I'll just begin locking the ones I've already worked with, which is the content for, I'm going to go back to the first frame, right click on that next object, and choose Paste Motion. And you'll notice that applies a timeline to that. I'll lock that down, right click on the next one, Paste Motion, lock it down, right click on the last one, Paste Motion. This has given me four animations. I of course don't want them all happening at the same time, so I'm going to stagger them. I'm going to have the first one start at frame 10. I'm going to have the next one start at frame 20. And I'm just going to stagger these in my timeline so they occur at different times in my timeline. Now if I were to play my timeline right now by just hitting the enter key, you'd notice the four different items fade in. Now at this point, I need the rest of my content to show up. So I'm going to click where I want it to extend my timeline out to, and I'm just going to insert a frame there. You can use the shortcut F5, or you could right click and choose insert a frame. I'm going to speed up the process by clicking on the next layer I want to work with, holding shift and clicking on the final layer, and I'll do that same thing, insert frame. Now if I hit enter, the entire timeline plays, and again you see everything fade in, but that's, you know, not what I want. So, I'm going to go back to frame 1. I'm going to go to the top of my timeline. I'm going to add an actions layer. Now I'm going to open my actions panel. In my actions panel, I'm going to insert a stop action. Now if I hit control enter to run my movie, or command enter if you're on a Mac, it should pop up, I should see my four buttons, and no content showing. It's exactly what I want. Now at this point, I need to make these four buttons take me to the four different areas. So I'm going to click on the first button, go to my properties panel, I'm going to give it an instance name of B1 underscore BTN. I'm being a little bit short with the instance names here, just to keep the code a little cleaner. Click on the second object after unlocking the layers, B2 underscore BTN, click on the third object, B3 underscore BTN, click on the four but fourth button, and call it B4 underscore BTN. I'm giving these instance names so I can write a little action script. Now, in Flash CS5, it added a snippets panel. I'm not going to use a snippets panel for this because I want to do this the old-fashioned way. I'm going to go back to my actions layer. I'm going to open my actions panel, and I'm going to write my button code for the first object. I'm going to say b1 underscore btn dot add event listener. The event I want to listen for is a mouse event, and it's the click version. And on click, I'm going to call a function called show content one. I need to make that function show content one. This function is going to go to and play frame 10. Now why frame 10? It's because frame 10 is where that next piece of content starts. And that will play its way to the end of the timeline. Get clicking button 1, plays the rest of the timeline. So that's not what I want. I want to insert a stop action right at the end of that first piece of content. So I'm going to add a stop action there. I'm going to do this throughout the rest of my timeline. Now I've inserted stop actions the rest of the way wherever I want my content to stop. If I run my movie again this time, I click my button, it shows me the first content. I can now script the rest of my buttons to do this. I'm going to go back to frame 1, open my actions panel, and I'm going to create the rest of my event listeners. I've created the rest of my event listeners that are exactly like the first one. For example, button 2, when it's clicked, is going to call a function show content 2. What does that function do? Well, it says go to and play 20. So each of these buttons goes to the appropriate frame. And if I test it, maybe click my third button, you'll see the appropriate content. I need a way to get back. So I'm going to add event listeners so that when I click anywhere in this file, it'll go back. Ideally, they would click that, that X in the upper right-hand corner. We're just going to make it if they click anywhere, it'll go back. 
So I'm going to go to the frame where the stop action is for my first piece of content. I'm going to click on this content and I'm going to add a uh, instance name called content1 underscore MC. I'm going to go to this frame. I'm going to open my actions layer. and I'm going to add one of those same event listeners, but this time for content1. Now I've copied and pasted the content in here, uh, or the event handler in here, and changed it around. Content1, when it's clicked, is going to call show menu. Show menu goes to frame one and stops. So I need to do this for the other two pieces of content, but I can't do it until they're actually on screen, which is why I'm putting it at the stop action. For the rest of these, I don't actually have to make a new function. Because I want them all to do the same thing, I can just have them on click call show menu. So I'm going to add this piece of code to all of them. I'm also not going to forget to give that piece of content an instance name. At this point, all four frames for my four pieces of content have the same code telling them when they're clicked to show the menu. And if I run my movie, I can now click anywhere and hide the menu. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to make this behave more like a button. So on rollover, this description at the bottom shows up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my timeline. I'm going to go to the first frame. I'm going to double click on that first button. Now I'm editing that button. I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit too. What I need to do is I need to move these items down here to the overstate. Now the way these buttons are made, there's actually a graphic that's kind of sitting on top. So I'm just going to select that graphic. I'm going to cut it, saying Control C. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call it Frame. And I'm going to do a paste in place on this layer. And that puts that frame back on that layer, although I'm going to put it down below everything. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the background image, I'm going to select the text, and I'm going to select the more button. I'm going to cut those, make a new layer, and call it roll over. And I'm going to do a paste in place there. Finally, I'm going to take that roll over and I'm going to move that keyframe to the overstate. And I'm going to hit F5 for my other layers so that they are just the same on that state. When I run my movie, you'll notice when I roll over it, I see the description pop up. Kind of bump the image a little bit. There's a little issue on the bottom, but that's okay. When I click on it, I see the content. And last but not least, I want this to animate showing up. So I'm going to select everything on this overstate. I'm going to convert those to a movie clip so I can hide a little animation inside of it. I'm going to call it Content 1 over. I'm going to go inside the movie clip and I want to animate this stuff fading in. Now there's a little shortcut way to do this. If you have everything selected, you can just right click on it and create a motion tween. Flash is going to tell you that I got to make these a symbol if it's going to happen because there's multiple objects. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to give me a motion tween. I can select it, add an alpha of zero at the beginning. At the end of it, click on it, add an alpha of 100, shrink this down to maybe 10 pixels, 10 frames, and I'm lastly going to add an actions layer in here so that these, this animation doesn't keep looping. I'm going to put a keyframe at the end, go to my actions panel, and add a stop action. That way it'll fade in and stop. But that's only going to happen on mouse over because this animation is on the overstate. If I run it and I roll over this object, you'll see that fade in nicely. I'm going to duplicate that same process for the other buttons. I'm not going to do that in the video. Uh, you could rewatch that original or what we just did if you want to see how to do that for the other button. All right. I've got all my buttons converted with a little animation inside. I've got my action script ready to roll. I run my movie one more time and I see some nice rollovers. I click on any one of these. I see the content for it. I can click to go back. So that was making my restaurant gallery in Flash.